where a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. However little is known of his character, Charlotte, he is the rightful property of one or other of the neighbourhood daughters. My dear, Mr. Bennett, Netherfield Park is let at last. Is it? Yes, it is, for I have just had it from Mrs. Long. And do you not want to know who has taken it? Uh, you want to tell me, and I have no objection to hearing it. Why, then, it is taken by a young man of large fortune from the north of England. He came down on Monday in a chaise and four to see the place, and was so much delighted with it, he has agreed to take it immediately. And he will be in possession by Michaelmas. Mr Bingley is his name. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, to be sure. A single man of large fortune. Five thousand a year. <laughs> What a fine thing for our girls. How so? Um, how can it affect them? Oh, Mr. Bennett, how can you be so tiresome? You must know that I'm thinking of his marrying one of them. Indeed. Is that his design in settling here? Design? Nonsense. How can you talk so? It is very likely that he may fall in love with one of them. Therefore, you must go and visit him as soon as he comes. I see no occasion for that. You and the girls may go, or you can send them by themselves, which perhaps would be the best. For as you are as handsome as any of them, Mr. Bingley might like you the best of the party. I dare you flatter me. I certainly have had my share of beauty, but I do not pretend to be anything extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give over thinking of her own beauty. Well, in most such cases, a woman hasn't much beauty to think of, my dear. Now, seriously, Mr. Bennett. You must go and see Mr. Bingley. I assure you, Mrs. Bennet, I will not. If you don't, Sir William and Lady Lucas will get there before us. <laughs> so we may not visit if you do not, as you well know, Mr. Bennet. I will write him a few lines to assure him of my hearty consent to his marrying whichever of the girls he chooses. Though I must throw in a good word for my little Lizzie. No, no, I beg you will not write at all if you... Elizabeth is not one whit better than the others. I'm sure she's not half as handsome as Jane, nor half as good-humoured as Lydia. She's always giving her the preference. They none of them have much to recommend them. They're all silly and ignorant like other girls. But Lizzie has something more of quickness than her sisters. Mr. Bennet, how can you abuse your own children in such a way? You take a delight in vexing me. You have no compassion on my poor nerves. You mistake me, my dear. I have high regard for your nerves. They're my old friends. I've heard you mention them with consideration these 20 years at least. You don't know what I suffer. Well, I hope you will get over it and live to see many young men of 5,000 a year come into the neighbourhood. It will be no use to us if 20 such should come since you will not visit them. Depend upon it, my dear. When there are 20, I'll visit them all. Then my father is remarkable. So odd a mixture of quick parts and caprice that even after 20 years, my mother still fails to understand him. Her mind is less difficult to comprehend.